This video covers common types and aspects of the SAP Cloud Application Program Model. There's a section in the documentation of uh, CAP. You can find on cap.cloud.sap. And if you go back and have a look at CDS, common types and aspects, there's a whole section of which aspects, which types um, SAP is providing out of the box. So let's just go on and go back to our data model and add a new entity and have a look what we can reuse from the so-called common package. So CAP ships with a pre-built model, SAP CDS common, that provides common types and aspects. We want to have a new entity, which is called orders. So for example, a customer can order some books comes with three fields. The first one is the key. This time it's not an integer, it's a UU ID. So I don't want to force a customer to provide a particular integer. But UU ID is automatically filled if there is no value provided. So let's just have a look at the documentation if we can't find anything with UU ID. And there's also the proof that the service provider runtimes automatically fill in UUID typed keys like these with auto-generated UUIDs. And interestingly, there's also a equivalent directly above. We can use CUID instead of UUID, which is a aspect. What is the aspect? There's also a section in documentation. An aspect allowed to flexibly extend definitions by new elements as well as overriding properties and annotations. So let's just go on and try to use CUID from common CDS. Before we can actually use the new aspect, we need to import types and aspects from the common CDS file. The common CDS file is located in node modules in the SAP package. Below CDS is a file called common CDS. If you don't have the packages yet, a npm install in the project directory directly on the bookshop level will bring you those packages. So let's have a look at common CDS. If there's something called CUID, and there is the abstract entity um, with canonical universal IDs. So let's import those aspects. And we can now remove the key field here and add it on the entity level. If we, for example, compile this one to SQL again, you'll see that we still have an ID here. What I also want to do is I want to have information when an order was created or updated. And that's information which should be provided out of the box and automatically without any further ado. And there's an aspect in common CDS called managed, which we could use similarly to the CUID. If we import managed aspect, we can also use it next to CUID. And let's compile the entity or the data model once again, you'll see that there are four additional fields. It's created at, created by, modified at, and modified by, exactly with the properties defined in our common CDS file. So whenever a new record is inserted, um, there is a timestamp for created at, and if there is a logged in user, um, the user ID will be set. And that's the same for when the record will be updated. Um, 
there will be a timestamp and the user ID. What we haven't done yet is we haven't added our entity to the service definition, so we can't use it with OData services yet. We'll do it exactly the same way as we have done it with the other entities. And if we start our application, you'll recognize that there is a new import statement. So we have the schema CDS file with our data model. We have the catalog service CDS with our service definition. And additionally, there is a import statement for common CDS because we have imported the aspects from common CDS. If we have a look at the metadata of orders, you will see that there is four additional fields, as we've seen it in the compile statement, coming from the managed aspect. And we have the ID field coming from the CU ID aspect with additional annotations later on if you want to use it, for example, in a Fiori UI. So with a, with a label, with um, annotations for hidden filter, or additionally, descriptions. So let's just go on and test our new entity, how that works. As we have already a HTTP file to send requests to our application, we'll add a new request, which is a post request to orders. And we actually only need two fields. It's the book ID and how many books we want to order. Let's just have a look for an ID of a book, which is 421. And the quantity is also of type integer. So what we haven't done yet, we have created our new entity and added it to the service definition, but we haven't deployed our changes to the database. and start the application. And if we send a request once again, we'll get a 201 response that the entity or the record was created with an ID. And we actually haven't provided an ID. That's because of CU ID will automatically fill the field with a generated UUID. But what we could also do is to provide an ID already. So CUID takes care of that. It only generates a value if there's no provided. So for the sake of simplicity, let's create a record, take the ID and change it slightly to fulfill the requirements of a new UID with regards to the length, for example. And let's change the UID and send the request once again. And as you can see, it also created a record, but now with my provided ID instead of automatically generate one. That's it about common types and aspects which are delivered by CAP out of the box. Thanks for watching.